Hello, hello, welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to be more specific today. I made a video about getting started with foundation. And like I said, I want to make a series to this foundation art tutorial. So this is a follow up to that. So before watching this, I highly suggest you to watch that first, but I guess it's also fine if you want to watch this first, okay? Okay. Okay, so what is anatomy? I found a simple answer by Elien. No, I butchered that name. I'm so sorry. This is what they said. Anatomy is a breakdown of parts or a presentation of a structure of a specific object living thing. Although if we were talking about human anatomy, it could simply mean as an understanding of the human body and how it works. So yeah, that's basically anatomy in a very short explanation. You all know that, we all know that, because today I am going to teach y'all anatomy. Wow, okay, let's clap. Oh, I'm excited, are you excited? I'm excited too. So let's just, just jump into it, shall we? Okay, I'm going to use my own characters for this video for reasons. So if you're wondering why they look like this, uh, just say that question, I guess. And by the way, we're only going to use a standing pose so we can better understand the anatomy. Poses will be in a separate video. Okay then, let's start. Whee. So first we're gonna use this character. His name is Diu and he's 15 so his body is more of a childlike or preteen. So his body is pretty much average. I guess we can say that he's a bit thin, probably because he does skip his meals. With that being said, I then first start with a stick man to rough out the pose. Basically, this is a guideline to where the shape will be put, which is the body parts. As you can see, even though that this is a stick man, you can roughly see the basic shapes there. So this is step one. I'll repeat, line up your lines depending on the character's pose, which in this case, a standing pose. Okay, so this is the second step. So the second step is to just basically put the shapes in there. Like I said in the previous video, you only have to use basic shapes. Like the head can be circle, square, or even a triangle if it fits your fancies. Or the torso is a wide triangle or a wide square. And the hip can be a small square or a small inverted triangle. Then the legs can be elongated rectangles or triangles. Same thing with the arms. See? Don't give complicated stuff. You see, we have to understand that our brain produces a plenty amount of mucus, hence why our mind tends to feel overwhelmed. And then we explode on the process, making our family wonder why our body disintegrated. Okay, now, in this section of the vid, what I'm doing right now is repeating step 2. Now relax, relax. Sometimes I purposely repeat steps, especially this one, so I can fix and adjust the wonky looking shape. This will help make the pose look more grounded. And we want that grounded pose, right? Oh, wait, pose! I meant to say pose. Uh, okay. Uh, and I also repeated this one so that I can reveal a special technique that I will explain a bit later on. So yeah, there's a special technique. Never mind what I said, I'm gonna explain that right now. This one is called the one to buckle my shoe technique. Uh, no, that's how it's really called. I am not joking. And that tip really did help me a lot. And I learned that from Ethan Becker himself. He's the one who said that. Boom, one, two, buckle my shoe. Basically, one, two, buckle my shoe helps you break down the body shapes easily. Like when you're drawing the head part, you only need two sections or two shapes to form one head. You don't need more than that. And on the torso and hip part, you can divide them into just two separate sections. Same with the arms and legs. Also the hand and feet. See? Look at the screen right there. Look at, look at the screen right now. Look, it's there. One, two. And then on the arm, one, two. On the hands and fingers, one, two. On the feet, one, two. And of course, my OC only has one arm, so he only has one over there. <laughs> I'm so mean. See, look at it. One, two, buckle my shoe. There you go. There, there you go. 
simplify things. You have to simplify. You have to, you have to simplify. Okay, okay. Now we're on step three. Ooh, this is where we start to spice things up a bit. Because step two is looking a bit flat, don't you think? Right? So to add more believability, we are going to add joints. Where to put the joints? Well, obviously, on the arm, wrist, knees, and on the hip part. How do you add joints? Well, basically, just add extra simple shapes. They can be little squares, circles, or semicircles. These joints are the one that connects to a body, body part that can move or rotate. Again, rotate? Is that right? Yeah, you, you, you get the point. Okay, okay, I'll tell you on something. Here's the thing. We don't do complex shapes like right away. No, 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 no. We're not psychopaths. What we do is we draw the basic shape first, and then right after that, we add more basic shapes on top of that. If you keep adding more basic shape, they will then look like complex shapes. Ah, you see, you see how artists trick you into thinking that they use bare complex shape when in reality, all of it was made out of simple baby shapes. Expose, expose. So yeah, in summary, step three is just mannequinizing your anatomy. Like, just add joints. Now it's step four. Now we're going somewhere because this step is all about 3D form. Okay, I know 3D shapes can be tricky with having a lot of sides and everything, but I'll tell you how a single line can change everything. Okay, you see the, the arm, right? To make it look 3D, all you have to do is add one line. Since this is a front view, you have to place the line a bit further because the other side of the arm isn't fully visible. Next, you just then have to trace the remaining lines of the arm and there you can see it's starting to have volume. See how a single dingle line can change a lot? Observe how a flat shape turns into 3D shape with one single line. Well, not one single line. It starts with a single line. I don't know. What do you think? So yeah, I just basically repeat this step to the rest of the body. this is the final product of our first anatomy and this is the four steps of how I do it okay now let's move on now let's try a different body shape this time again I'm gonna use my OC a different OC and his name is Eglon he's a merchant who just loves to hoard stuff he sit and eat most of his spare time. You can find a time where he's not chewing anything. Because of that, he's more on the heavier side. So this one has more volume. If you guys decide to draw a person with more mass, of course you're still going to use basic shapes. <laughs> what else? You just have to use wider shapes. Make the lines or shape more wider. That's all. But I will admit something. I made a mistake here. I made the legs a bit too long and the tummy a bit too short. But there's really nothing wrong with that. It's just that it wasn't my intention to do that. I have another intention in mind and it didn't meet that. So I fixed this mistake later on. But if you guys really struggle on doing this kind of anatomy or any anatomy, just use reference or trace and break the down professional artists and study them. Um, correction here. I meant to say break down professionals, artists, art. Do not break down the artist itself, okay? They're, they're fragile already. Don't, don't, okay? Okay, I have a tip for a drawing arm. Always keep in mind that the other arm part where the hand is placed, 
That one is a bit smaller compared to the shoulder part. Same thing with the legs. The legs and arm almost have the same process, drawing process, okay? Just keep that in mind. There is Eglon, our chubby little man. Let's move on to the next section of this video. Okay, for this next character, I actually don't have a name for her yet, but all I know that she is a harlot. Anyway, this is a woman's body. I think this is the easy one, easiest one to do or to understand because this anatomy has a ton of reference for it. Yeah. Anyway, I want to explain something that it never made it on the previous video because CapCut decided that it's best to just put it in here. I want to give out 3 tips that will help you draw better and a bit more healthier. So the first one is to draw with your arm, not with your wrist. When I first heard this, I thought it was a myth or something. Like, it seems so weird to draw using your arm because I've been drawing with my wrist for a very long time. So it sounded like an alien thing. But when I gave it a shot, well, to my surprise, it is better. And why is that? Well, according to my animation teacher and other artists and my own experience, drawing with your wrist will hurt a lot and can easily hurt. Not saying that using arm won't exhaust you, but it's more painful. And not only that, it limits the area you're drawing. Unlike with your arm, you can cover more drawing areas because drawing with arms create more looser lines. And personally, I have better control when using my sister's arm. But when I use my wrist, my arm does look stiffer. I mean my art looks stiffer. Jeez, can you speak properly? Obviously, it's going to be difficult to use arm at first because you're used to drawing with your wrist but with determination and time you'll get used to it believe me it took me some time to get used to it but my main motivation why i wanted to stop drawing with my wrist well as i said before it really hurts like hurts very much second tip is pretty simple just hold your pen at the middle not super middle but at least avoid drawing at the tip of the pen or near there. Why is it? Well, because when you hold your pen on the middle, it can help you create more looser and confident lines. We want that confident lines, baby! Just try and see if you like it. And plus, I find drawing near the tip can make your art progress really slow. Now the third tip. This is where I struggle the most. I find this even harder to follow than drawing with your arms. You wanna know what it is? Well, it's where you have to hold your pencil lightly. Again, for the same reason, it helps create confident line and it won't hurt your hand. Even though my hands is the size of a 10 years old, I hold my pencil as if I have a grudge on it. I'm strangling that sucker as if it killed my family. I don't know why my hands is like that. And the reason why I find it hard to get rid of it, because most of the time I don't notice it until my hands started hurting. My animation teacher told me a story about when they were a student, they had to hold their pens lightly and while the students were drawing, the teacher will then suddenly steal their pencil. If they were able to steal the pencil easily, that means the students were following instruction on holding the pencil lightly. If not, then that means they are holding the pen too tightly. Man, if I was there, no teacher would steal a pencil from me. But of course, over the years, I learned to change that slowly. I haven't fully gotten rid of it, but I mostly draw lightly now. So yeah, those are the three tips. I hope it helped you because it surely did help me. Now, if you notice something in this video, I have done something that no other anatomy tutorial did. Is that before I do the anatomy, I then describe the character's personality first or characteristic. The reason for that is sometimes, or even most of the time, the the way how the anatomy look like depends on their personality. Do you get what I mean? Like for example, like I said, like 
Eglon, the chubby merchant. The reason why he's so massive because he hasn't been taking care of himself. All he's doing is eat and not move on his chair. Oh, well, I guess I understand why anatomy tutorial doesn't tackle this kind of topic because he, you can learn how to draw anatomy without learning the personalities. But for me, this thing really helped me a lot. If you know the character, their story, their background, their history, what they like, what they dislike, what they do, their lifestyle, that's a key point, their lifestyle, it helps me what the character would look like. It will help me what type of anatomy or body shape they will have. Yeah, storytelling does help me a lot. So I want to put it out there so you guys can know. So yeah, this is the final anatomy for the woman. And for the last anatomy, this is a very quick one. This is a male one. I forgot his name. What is his name? His name is Enoch. I... He's just Enoch. Enoch? Okay, I, I can't tell much about him because the description in my head is wobbling. So yeah, he's, this is just quick. I just wanted to draw a male body. And I just want to complete the anatomy family, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm, I'm tired and hungry. Well, I hope you guys learned something in this video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the ones who supported me. You guys mean a lot to me. And yeah, this is it. We're at the end of the video. And good night.